The assembly shown in the figure below consists of a thin rod of length 2.23 centimeters, which is uh, 0.23 meters, and mass of 1.2 kilograms, with a solid ball of diameter that, which we're going to have to convert to a radius, and we're going to have to convert to, so, um, D equals 0.1 meters, R equals 0 0.05 meters. So the radius, uh, are we going to want radius? I don't know. I'm going to keep that in mind. Uh, mass 2 kilograms attached to the top. The assembly is free to pivot about a frictionless axle through the bottom of the rod. The assembly is initially vertical and at rest when it starts to rotate in a clockwise direction. After the combination rotates through 90 degrees, what is the rotational kinetic energy in joules? Hmm. So really, there's a couple ways for us to do this. Um, it asks us for rotational kinetic energy, but rotational, completely unnecessary word there. What is its kinetic energy? Um, and so what I'm going to do then is I'm going to look at this as two particles which fall this far. And so what I'm going to say is conservation of energy because we're not losing um, energy due to like friction or anything like that. So I'm going to say energy kinetic initial plus energy potential initial equals energy kinetic final plus energy potential final. I'm going to say that its final potential energy is zero because it's, I'm going to call this our height equals zero. I'm going to say its initial kinetic energy is zero because it's not initially moving. And so after the combination, what is its rotational kinetic energy? Um, so what we're really trying to find is what is its energy kinetic final? And its energy kinetic final is going to be equal to its energy potential initial. And to do that, I'm going to say energy potential initial equals energy potential rod initial plus energy potential sphere initial. And the energy potential for the rod is going to be at its center of mass. And the center of mass of the rod is going to be halfway up. So energy potential rod initial equals mass rod gravity times height rod initial, which is going to be uh, mass of the rod is 1.2 kilograms. That's going to be 1.2 times gravity, which I'm going to do 9.8 could do 9.81. I'm going to do 9.8 times the height of the rod. And in this case, I'm going to use the um, center of mass. So it's going to be 0.23 over 2. Put that into a calculator. Get an answer for that. 1.2 times 9.8 times quantity 0.23 over 2. And I get an answer of 1.3524 joules. And that's going to be for the energy potential initial of the rod. Now we're going to do the same thing for the sphere, energy potential sphere initial. It's going to be mass of the sphere, gravity, height of the sphere initial. Mass of the sphere is 2 kilograms. Okay, so it's going to be 2 times 9.8 times the height of the sphere. Now this is where I gotta be careful because the height of the sphere, we're gonna look at it here. So this is gonna be 0.23 meters for the length plus the uh, radius because we're gonna to go to the center of the sphere because that's where the center of the mass is gonna be. That's gonna be 0.1 divided by two, which can be 0.05. So I'm just gonna call this um, Let's see here. Yeah, I'll do purple. 0.1 divided by 2. So then come over here. Oh, make sure I got 0.23. Yep, 0.23. 0 0.23 plus 0.1 divided by 2. And I know it doesn't feel like it's going to be a lot, 
Now, that 0.1 divided by 2 is not going to add a lot to it, but I think it's still necessary. 0.23 plus 0.1 over 2. Is that drawn to scale? I don't think it's... Eh, maybe. So then, point, blah, 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 blah 5.48. 8, which seems reasonable. So energy, potential, initial is going to be these two added together, which is going to be that plus 1.3524. It gives us a potential energy initial of 6.84 joules, and that is going to be equal to energy kinetic final, which is going to be the um, con rotational kinetic energy once it reaches 90 degrees. 6.84 joules. What is its angular speed in radians per second of the rod and ball? Okay, so now that we found the energy, we used one half uh, mv squared. Yeah, we didn't even use one half mv squared. I'm going to use, so now for part B, I'm going to say energy kinetic, one half mv squared. Um, true, but the other, another way of writing it is one half i omega squared. They're both the same idea, just different ways of looking at it. And I'm going to then, the rod and ball are rotating together as a system, and so they're both going to have the same angular, um, acceler ac angular speed. They'll have different linear speeds, but they're going to have the same angular speeds. And so I'm going to rewrite this as one half I total, because now this is going to be moment of inertia of the rod and the ball, times omega squared. Uh, we know energy kinetic. We can find a uh, moment of inertia total, and one half. Well, it's just w one half, and so we can we can find omega squared. Omega squared is going to be two times the kinetic energy all over I total. Now we're going to do a little sidebar here and find out what the total. Uh, moment of inertia. I'm going to call moment of inertia rod plus moment of inertia sphere. Moment of inertia rod. That is going to be a linear rod rotated about the end point. So we have thin rod, length L, mass M, perpendicular rotation axis, right here, one third ML squared. So I'm going to call that one third. m rod d squared. I'm going to use d just because that's the distance they gave us. Now this is going to be um, d squared. Now we're going to have to do for i sphere. i sphere, a moment of inertia of a sphere is two-fifths mr squared. So we have two-fifths mr squared, but the nuance there is that is rotating 2 fifths mr squared plus, and then this is going to be the parallel axis theorem. So it's going to be plus m delta r squared, where the moment of inertia of the sphere is going to be the moment of inertia of the sphere through the center of mass plus the mass of the sphere times the uh, most the um, displacement of the axis parallel from the center of mass. So basically, this delta r is going to be this distance right there. And so I'm going to calculate that out. Am I going to calculate that out? Um, put a little s there for sphere. You know, I'm just going to do it all at once. So this becomes mass of the rod, or moment of the inertia of the rod, one third mass rod d squared plus two fifths mass sphere radius sphere squared plus mass sphere delta r squared, which becomes, and I, I'm going to move this up towards my picture. That way I can look at it. There we go. Get some idea of what's going on here. Maybe change this to a green. One third 
mass of the rod is 1.2. Length of the rod is 0.23, which we're going to square, plus 2 fifths mass of the sphere, which is 2, times the radius of the sphere, um, which is 0 0.05. 0 0.05 squared plus again the mass of the sphere which is 2 times the displacement of the sphere which is 0 0.23 plus the radius of the sphere which is 0 0.05 I know really messy my handwriting should be better it's not I apologize and this should be the this will be the moment of an inertia total of our rod and ball system. So we have one third times 1.2 times 0.23 squared plus two fifths times two times 0.05 squared plus two times quantity 0.23 plus 0.05 squared. And it's going to look something kind of like this in Wolfram Alpha. Yep, squared, 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 yep. And I get 0 0.18. So I'm going to say 0 0.18. And then the, uh, it's like kilograms uh, meter squared. And so now I can take that, go back to our equation right here, and so omega is going to be the square root of 2 times kinetic energy, which we said was 6.84, divided by total moment of inertia, which is 0 0.18, and that gives us an answer of, let's do square root, quantity, quantity over quantity, top quantity is 2 times 6.84, Bottom quantity is 0 0.18. We take the square root of the whole thing. That gives us maybe 8.72 radians per second. And that's going to be the angular speed of the system as it's falling. What is the angular speed of the rod and ball? 8.72. What is the linear speed of the center of mass of the ball? So this goes back to the idea of... Um, x equals r theta, v equals r omega, a equals r alpha. They're actually cross products, but this is close enough for what we need. And so we're going to look at this portion right here. So the linear speed, v sphere, is going to be the r, which is the distance of the sphere, which is 0.23 plus 0.05 times the angular speed, which we said was 8.72. So we're going to take that previous answer, multiply that by 0.23 plus 0.05. And that gives us a linear speed, velocity of the sphere, of 2.44 meters per second. Hmm. 2.44 meters per second. How does it compare with the speed had the ball fallen freely from the same distance of 23. Okay, so this is actually kind of cool. So we should, the idea is, um, will this be faster or slower? And it's going to be slower because basically if it was just the mass of the sphere, it'd be the same. But we're not just mass of the sphere. We have the, basically we have the mass of the rod falling and the mass of the sphere falling. And since the rod is falling, the center of mass of the rod is falling from a lower height, it's going to contribute a slower speed overall. So long story short, uh, energy kinetic or energy potential initial is going to equal energy kinetic final. And this is just the sphere. This is calculating the sphere falling on its own. Conservation of energy. I could have written that energy kinetic initial, energy potential final, but those are going to be zero. I know I'm skipping steps here. I'm sorry. 
so mass sphere gravity height sphere equals one half mass sphere velocity sphere squared mass sphere cancels velocity sphere squared is 2 gh yes I'm good at that so we should get a number that is faster square root of 2 times 9.8 times height of 0.23 and I got 2.12 hmm did I do something terribly wrong? Maybe. Uh, let's see here. Two gravity height square rooted. Oh, it's not 0.23. Sorry, this height here. Height is 0.23 plus 0.05. Plus 0.05. Yeah, it's still smaller though. Interesting. Maybe I failed somewhere. So, height of the sphere, or velocity of the sphere, should be the square root of 2 times 9.8 times 0.23 plus 0 0.05. Because 0 0.05 is to bring you up to the center of mass of the sphere. And that gives us an answer of 2.34 meters per second. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. How does it compare with the speed had the ball fallen freely from the distance of that? Express your answer as a percentage of B falling. Interesting. Maybe, maybe I did something Maybe I did something wrong. Maybe not. So, uh, 2.34, 2.44, I guess it looks like it's falling faster as it rotates down as opposed to when it's, if it's just free falling. And that's due to the mass. The, the difference here is that you have the mass of the rod as well so a little bit suspicious but it feels like the math was right and i think this is probably the correct approach so i would go for that and then it looks like they want you to so it looks like the v swinging is faster by whatever um 2.2.44 minus 2.34 divided by 2.34 eh, by about probably 4%. So, maybe the transfer percentage of V falling. Interesting. Interesting. Anyway, so that's how I would approach this problem. That's my thoughts on it. Hope that helped. See you in the next problem.